So now that we know how to understand and interpret nested quantifiers, let's put this together with the interaction of quantifiers with our logical operators. So in particular, let's go ahead and take a nice big complicated expression that involves nested quantifiers and attempt to negate it. So I'm going to consider the following example. I'm going to try to negate this nice compound expression right here, which involves quantifiers, and simplify it so that no knots appear inside of it. The biggest piece, pieces of advice that I can give you for this is, first off, practice, practice, practice. And the next thing is... We have to be especially careful with the application of all the different rules that we have learned, like De Morgan's laws and all the different identities that we have seen so far. So let's go ahead and take this big statement right here and see if we can negate it. So what I want to do is negate this thing, negate that thing right there. Okay, so I need to apply De Morgan's law first off. So De Morgan's law tells me whenever I try to negate a universal quantifier right here, what I'm gonna have to do is flip the universal to an existential. And then I have to apply that negation to the rest of my expression. Well, the rest of the expression includes this existential operator right here. So then it would look like that. So I've flipped my operator and I've distributed my naught. And again, I have to apply De Morgan's law right here again, because I'm negating one of my quantifiers. So applying De Morgan's law, I have that this thing is logically equivalent to, I flip my quantifier, and then I negate everything inside of here. So I've successfully applied De Morgan's law. Unfortunately, it asked me to simplify this so that no knots appear. So I'm going to have to apply De Morgan's law again, but this time over a conjunctive right here, over this and. So applying De Morgan's law yet again, I'm going to get not x less than or equal to y, and I flip my operator so it becomes an or. And then I negate my p of x right there. Okay, I can simplify this a little bit further because I know this expression right here, I can apply the not. And then here, well, I don't know what p of x is, so I'm going to have to leave that not inside. So am I stuck? Have I failed? Have I not been able to simplify that so that no knots appear? Well, Actually, I remember my definition of implication. So by definition of implication, I can rewrite this thing, this part, as an implication. So this would be my hypothesis, and that would be my conclusion. So I could rewrite this as follows. So fantastic. Recalling the definition of my implication, I have now been able to negate this statement right here and simplify that so that no knots appear anything inside of it.
So you can see how I took this step by step and I went slow. I went slow to make sure that I applied to Morgan's Law correctly in the first step and then to applied to Morgan's Law correctly in the second step, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I highly recommend that when working out your examples, you use a structured format like this so you can keep track of exactly how you're applying every step. That way, in any case that you get it wrong, you can backtrack and figure out exactly where your mistake might have happened.